Hi there beautiful people, welcome back to Becoming Health Namibia. I am Miriam. I am currently a fourth year medical student at UNAM School of Medicine in Namibia. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome home. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. And please do not forget to press that subscription button as well as the notification bell as I believe that the information that will be shared to you through this channel will truly be helpful. If you haven't already watched my first YouTube video, which I will be inserting somewhere here or here, I had spoken about how I had failed mathematics in grade 11 and how I had gotten from a fail in mathematics to a distinction. Well, long story short, in my life, in high school, I had never gotten below 90% ever since grade 8. I was always in the 90s, right, until grade 11. And one of the reasons, I believe that grade 11 was a huge transitioning for me from what I would call lower secondary school. And I've also realized that in this transitioning, there were certain things that I was not doing that I began to later do on that helped me to come back from a fail back to the distinctions that I had always been getting in mathematics. And these are the steps that I will be sharing with you according to the experience that I've had. These are the tips that I have applied and I believe that they will help you as well as long as you apply them. Before we start, I would highly encourage that you have a notepad and a pen to note down the things or you can watch and then later on come back to the video to watch it again while you're taking notes. So tip number one is understanding the formula. You need to understand why a formula is used as well as how it is used. This helps you to be able to apply the formula to other mathematic problems that you will encounter in that topic and it makes it easy for you to solve that mathematic problem. It's not just about taking down notes. You actually need to understand the formula. You need to wrap the concept around the topic. And if you don't understand, don't just sit there quiet thinking that I'll catch up later or I'll go ask the teacher later on. Perhaps an opportunity might not present itself for you to go back to the teacher and ask them to help you with that question. So while you are in class and the teacher is explaining to you the purpose of that formula, how it's used and why it's used, you need to pay attention as well as to ask when you don't understand. Don't make the same mistake that I did. I sat down there thinking to myself that I will go and try to understand it at home because I was too scared to disrupt the class with my question or I was scared to look like, you know, why is this child asking questions? She should know these things by now, you know. She should know this information. It doesn't work like that. It's your education, it's your future. If you have to disrupt the class respectfully by raising your hand and asking ma'am or say, please go over the formula. Tip number two, you need to know your basics. Your basics are what makes up mathematics. It's a continuous process that gets to be built onto it. I believe that most of the time as to why we don't get to understand mathematics, it's either because there is a gap in knowledge of the basics of mathematics or because we simply don't put in effort to know the basics. For example, simplifying is one of the basics that need to be known when it comes to solving mathematic problems. Let's look at quadratic equations, for example. 
Quadratic equations can be solved using the factorizing method, formula method, method of completing the squares, or the graphing method. But that's not the point here. If you were to be given this equation, some people would panic. However, if you were to be given this equation, you'll be more at ease. But let's get back to this equation. This equation needs to be simplified in order to be solved. We make sure that a zero exists only at one side of the equation. And by doing that, we come to the... On the left side of the equation, we make sure that we have a zero by minusing 3x squared minus 3x squared equals to zero minus 10x plus 10x equals to zero. And then we further simplify the second equation that you can see here to give us the third equation that you can see here by adding or subtracting the like term. In simpler terms, the equation that looks so long is basically the second short one which is had to simplify it. Another basic that we can look at is knowing your rules. These are basic mathematics and it's very important. Let's look at exponentials for example. The basic rule for dividing exponents with the same base is that we subtract the given powers. This is also known as the quotient property of exponents. These are just few of the examples, but now you get to see the importance of knowing your basics. At number three is reducing careless mistakes. You need to take note of every mistake that you make. By taking note is actually write it down. After writing down these careless mistakes that you realize that you always make, from there, write a step-by-step -step solution to each mistake that you do. This enables you to be more aware and conscious of the correct way of doing things when it comes to solving mathematic problems. Some of the careless mistakes that okay is by not simplifying things. Simplifying things helps you most of the time to get to the correct answer without any complications rather than using a complicated method. And 50% of solving a mathematic solution is by simplifying it. Some of the few examples of careless mistakes that tend to be made in mathematics is typing numbers wrong into the calculator. You first of all need to have a good calculator. Please do invest in one. And second of all, please know how to use your calculator and ensure that you do not make mistakes. Other examples is not knowing your conversion guidelines. For example, you may be given a problem sum that has two different units. To, in order to work with it, you have to convert one unit into the other unit but unfortunately some people go into the exam or test without knowing their conversion guidelines and end up getting things wrong other examples are writing a wrong number dropping a negative sign not checking your work etc at number four is do not leave out difficult topics and this can be done by practicing mathematics every day so that from early on you get to recognize the topics that you are weak in as well as the topics that you are strong in. And after recognizing these topics, then you need to take out a good amount of time so that you can target the topics that you are not good at. And this is where help comes in. You can get the help of a teacher by asking them to make time for you after class or getting help of a tutor in my case i got help from a tutor and you can also get help from somebody who is really really good at these topics so tip number five is almost similar to tip number four here you note down the questions that you find difficult across any topic that you're currently doing after noting it down go back to your basics go back to your formula and then come and reattempt that question until you get it if you don't understand like i said ask for help 
Tip number six is writing down your formulas. You need to know your formulas across all the topics. So when you go to a topic, make sure that you have your formulas written down and make sure that mentioned in tip one, you understand how to apply and use those formulas. It's very important that you know your formulas, that you have them written down across the different topics in mathematics. A tip number seven, you need to identify what the question is asking you. If you're stuck on a problem, you'll never solve it if you don't understand what the problem is actually asking. Take a step back and look at the problem again. Think about what this problem is asking. Is it asking for speed? Is it a geometric question? If so, what shape is involved? For example, if it was geometry, after identifying what the question is asking, go back to the shape, go back to the properties of the shape and apply it to the question. At tip number eight, we have practicing and deep learning. You need to practice mathematics because in as much as you can memorize your formulas or as much as you can know how to apply your formulas, it won't really help you when it comes to tests or exams. Because in the test or exam, you will be encountered with various problems that you might not have seen before. And because you haven't practiced, you won't know how to apply the formulas to these problems. Practicing questions enables you to know how to apply these formulas to various kinds of problems and it helps you to have confidence to do so. And tip number nine is don't give up. If you find that you get demotivated when you get to a sum that you cannot solve at that moment, don't beat yourself up about it. Take a breather, come back and try to solve it again. A tip number 10 is doing past papers. And this is very important for two reasons. Doing past papers helps you to iron out mistakes that you keep on making. It also exposes you to possible questions that they could ask in the examination. I highly advise that you just don't stick to textbooks alone. Yes, do master the textbook, carry out or practice the sums that are given to you in the textbook. But after that, go and practice on past papers. Doing past papers is not an option. Make sure that it's not an option. Make sure you don't enter an exam without practicing past papers. Tip number 11 is creating an effective study plan. Spread out your work into a study time frame so that you don't have to cram up the work. Cramming simply won't help. You can start by dedicating each day to practicing mathematics. We have come to the end of the study tips. I am certain that if you apply these study tips with consistency, motivation and discipline, you will begin to see the changes that you want to see in mathematics. They did help me and I'm sure they will for you as well. If you know of anybody that is struggling in mathematics, please do share this video with them. It's not just for, any, for people that have failed mathematics, but for anybody that wants to come from the current position you are in when it comes to mathematics to getting better marks that you would want in mathematics. In the comment section, please do comment down below what you could take away from this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe as well as press the notification bell as well as to like the video. Thank you so much for joining me and I am looking forward to you coming back to the comment session and telling me if you have effectively applied the study tips, how they have helped you.